the first chink in the armor of any organization is usually disloyalty. I want to quote something from the notes that were always part of my annual strategy meeting I held with my coaches, and it goes like this. We will be loyal to one another. I will defend you, and you will have to defend me. It starts there with loyalty. Now, why is that? Simply put, it's because of adversity. Adversity will come, and when it does, it will work to divide you and weaken unity that is so necessary for success. Make no mistake, I'm talking about the success of a football team, the success of a family unit, the success of a work group, the success of any endeavor that relies upon more than a single person. You cannot allow disunity. So you ask me, hey, well, coach, how do I create loyalty? Whether it's your personal relationships, your sales group, your family, or even the soccer team, you may be coaching. Listen up. You demand loyalty. And the way you demand loyalty is by practicing it. It's my belief that you should always defend the people in your circle until or unless the facts mandate otherwise. You hurt your credibility if you prematurely jump to a conclusion before the facts are in. And those facts are then proved wrong. Now most coaches learn pretty early that you succeed or fail together. And if you don't support one another, you'll all end up losing. During times of adversity, you circle your wagons, you remain loyal. How important is loyalty to good leadership? You abandon loyalty altogether. Show no loyalty to anyone in your life and get none in return. Then call me at six months and tell me how things are going. Your peers, your family, your coworkers, your teammates, they will all rally around you if you'll demonstrate trustworthiness, dedication, and faithfulness. The starting point to all great relationships is loyalty.